Hi guys, it's Tim here, and behind me, we've got the Jetta that came across from Germany three years ago, and I've not done anything with it since. We're gonna look through it and see everything that's wrong with my German Jetta. Now, as you'll know from the previous video, I went across to Germany and bought this car three and a half years ago and haven't touched it since. If you haven't seen that video, take a look just up here and then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But if you've already subscribed to the channel and you've seen the, uh, seen the previous video, then you'll know all about this Jetta. So today, I'm gonna to go through it and show you what's wrong with this car and what we need to do to get it back on the road. Now, first things first, with any old Volkswagen, there's rust. So looking at this car, it's not that bad on the surface, but when you actually have a closer look, there's lots of little bits that actually make you think, oh, what have I bought? So taking a look at it now, um, we'll start off with the wheel arch. So you can see here underneath this arch trim, it's not looking great, is it? So that's obviously rubbed at some point over the years and, uh, and caused a bit of damage to the paintwork there. As we go round it, there's all sorts of, I mean, what the hell is that? Someone's like bondoed that arch trim on with some type of sealant. It's not looking pretty, is it? So again, didn't know about that when I bought the car, but uh, once you've got to Germany and you see it, it's not really much you can do about it, is there? So looking at that, it's the same here on this side trim. Now looking at this, side skirt has obviously been driven into a low wall or a post or something because we've got some damage to the skirt and we've got damage to the bottom of the door as well now as you'll probably remember from the last video i did say this car was supposed to have had both the doors changed before i picked it up this one clearly wasn't um, but as we look at the other side to be honest he didn't do me any favors swapping that other one either looking at this driver's door you can see the rust that i pointed out in the previous video so this bottom corner here is is rusted underneath where the original driver trim would have uh, would have sat so water's got in under this leading edge and it started to rot all of this along here will to be honest just polish out but looking at the bottom of the door here there's a slight dent in the wing um, so that's not ideal um, but again we could probably sort that out with a PDR as long as uh, when we take the wheel arch off arch trim off rather we don't see anything worse now again this car has been driven into a low wall or post on this side at exactly the same place as on the other side so um so again it's going to be two new side skirts because uh they're beyond saving now around the bottom of the windscreen we've got the typical sort of rust underneath the windscreen seal again it's not great and i didn't know about it when i originally agreed to purchase the car so you look around that middle wiper blank that's uh, that's rusty there and again same story under here so to fix that is going to be a windscreen out and um, that's actually not too bad but we're going to do the whole scuttle anyway now the top of the windscreen seal on this is not looking great um don't know whether it's an original one or it has been changed at some point and it's actually shrunk a bit because you can see here that it doesn't quite fit the original line of where a seal has been in the past and we've got rust that's come through here and that's kind of below the line of the what would have been the original seal or if this is the original seal this is obviously shrunk and it's uh and it's pulled back exposing the paint that's already been worn away by the original seal now i don't know if you can see it there but that is not an original volkswagen windscreen it's got a top tint which is nice but it's clearly been changed at some point so it's had a new windscreen which is great it means it's not full of stone chips and scuffs and cracks and all of that rubbish but it has had a replacement seal and it looks like that is what's caused the issue here with the rust the original seal has been a bit higher up it's worn the paint away a little and this new seal is slightly smaller so it's left that sort of exposed to the elements and it started to rot so it doesn't look great 
it's not it's, it's not terminal by any stretch of the imagine touch wood he says but we'll know more as and when we take the screen out but it's certainly going to need painting so that adds on to the cost of this car um, which obviously the more and more paint this is going to need the more and more expensive this car is going to work out to be now around the back of the car looking at this big bumper it's in better days so if it was a golf big bumper i wouldn't be too bothered because obviously there's there's plenty about now as it's a jetta slightly harder to come by good second-hand parts so i'll be talking to matt palmer at mark two spares to see if he can sort me out otherwise i might have to try and see if i can't track down either a new old stock or a good quality reproduction bumper from someone like vw heritage because if we look at this bumper now this car may have had a big exhaust on it at some point in the past because that's clearly been cut away and looks terrible but that aside you just look at the back bumper here it's been backed into something this kind of has taken a knock and that's not straight either so definitely going to need a replacement bumper but still around the back of the car we've got more rust and it's going to need more paintwork so underneath the jetta badge here you can see there's some rust in that rear panel and this badge has just been stuck over the top and there's all sorts of rubbish and leftover glue from where there was obviously some type of badge on here before but again that means this panel is going to need painting now we've also got some dents in the bonnet here so um that's quite bad it's a break in the paint there as well so we're not gonna be able to get that pdr'd this is going to need repairing and painting as well now we know this car runs really well because it drove me home from germany but a couple of little bits under the bonnet if we look at the inner cv boot um, we've got a split there so that's going to need changing and you'll probably remember me saying that when i went out to pick this car up it had a running issue that i knew nothing about until i got there so uh, the car would need to be started with a wire that you connected underneath the bonnet next to the coil and you'd touch that onto the uh onto the positive side of the battery to get the car started now it was over three years ago but i think it was that yellow connector i had to connect the wire to that and bridge it with the battery and it turned out it was an inhibitor fault with the gear stick itself so being an automatic you are supposed to only be able to start them in neutral or parked and the the switch in this had failed it's quite common it, it, it does happen in these as the guy who bought it off his golf automatic also had the same problem which is probably how he knew to start it with a wire now it's quite an easy fix um if you want to if you want to bypass it now from a safety point of view probably wouldn't recommend it because it's there to stop you starting it in gear and um and if you're going to do it you'd probably want to track down a replacement stick um or selector and and do it properly or for me because i always had bigger plans for this car i bypassed it so just a couple of wires and it meant that i could start this car as and when and i've had no problems with it since as you can see just under here this is the this is the plug and we've uh, we've bridged a couple of wires here to bypass the faulty inhibitor and now the car stops and starts as it should so inside the car what have we got now we've got these unusual pasadena seats that were an addition when i got that um, they're like driver's seats but with the gti bolster but unfortunately looks like the cable is stretched in the driver's side seat and it doesn't tilt forward now there's lots of holes and bodges in this car and you look at it now and think oh my god how could someone do that but bearing in mind there was a time when this car was probably only worth about five six hundred pounds and people just did what they did to keep it on the road to just to get by so you look at that silicon sealant holding on the door pockets and the speaker pods but again there was a time it just wasn't worth going out and buying new parts to do it the right way so what's the car cost us well the car itself was 1400 pounds so after the trip to germany hotel flight ferry fuel food probably about two thousand pounds to get that car back to the uk so it still needs to be registered which means it's going to need an mot and it's going to need the work done to to get it through an mot so we're going to have to do that drive shaft boot so um that inner cv boot needs to be changed and there's going to be a couple of other bits and pieces we need to wire the um the fog light and a couple of other bits and bobs so we'll get all of that done and it'll be good for an mot so 
we could have that running and driving for probably a couple of hundred pounds and um, yeah it's it's a respectable little mark ii but it's not perfect it's certainly not clean due to that um due to that windscreen seal now i could be shady as you like and just put a different windscreen seal in to put a genuine one in so it's a little bit bigger and it covers up all that rust but that's not going to help me because that's going to just continue to rot away and um yeah it should be a really shady thing to do so we're going to have to get that painted so that and then we've got the wheel arch we've got the bonnet um we've got the bottom of the doors <sighs> to be honest i'm thinking that car's probably going to need a full respray so so that jetta that started off at fourteen hundred pounds, it's probably going to cost us close to four and a half, five thousand pounds, and that's before we do anything drastic like change the engine. Now, four and a half thousand pounds is that a good buy? Well, you could look at it and say four and a half thousand pounds is a lot of money, which it is. I'm not saying that that it's not for a second, but. These cars are, are rapidly becoming classics. Jetta Coupes are, are very few and far between, even though I've owned four of them now. And I guess, looking back at our live stream, when there was the 1.8 GL that, uh, that I think had been bought from UKD for four and a half, five thousand pounds, and it was super clean, had very low miles on it, but it was four and a half, five thousand pounds for a uh, for a Mark II. But then Dave kind of put it into perspective. Um, he spent more than that on bodywork on his bright blue metallic. So if you look at it that way, four and a half thousand pounds, and I've got an absolutely immaculate Mark II Jetta Coupe, and then it's kind of a blank canvas. We've got the interior we can change. We've got the engine. We've got the wheels the suspension now i kind of like those wheels um so i think they're in desperate need of a refurb i mean one of them still got say sport stickers all over it but i think to have that staggered seven and a half on the rears and sevens on the front in a 16 inch oz super t is going to look fantastic um i just love the way that it sits at the back of the car especially so so again it's more money it's more time but look I really love that car um, so for me I think it's going to be absolutely worth it but then doing an engine conversion we've got the exhaust to think about so exhaust on a Mark II Jetta it's probably going to cost me four or five hundred pounds for a full stainless system for that so again we're, we're, we're pushing these costs up and when you look at it it could cost me anywhere near to maybe ten thousand pounds once I've done an engine conversion, got it painted, everything else. I mean, do you think it's worthwhile? Would you spend 10 grand on a Mark II? Or would you just enjoy it for what it is, a little 1600 auto, and just drive it for the fun of it? So, I don't know. I mean, I personally am leaning towards maybe having it super clean and, uh, and making it something a bit special. But then again, there's a lot to be said for just driving it and enjoying it. So. Guys, tell me what you think down in the comments below. And remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And I'll see you on the next one.